How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Hopefully you guys are having a great day so far. My name is Gianluca. I'm a first year Canadian medical student and today we're finishing up with my high score on the MCAT series. We're talking about the biological and biochemical foundations of living systems or basically the biology and biochemistry section of the MCAT. First things first, I got to talk about a major pitfall that a lot of students have been falling into regarding studying and preparing for this test because I've gotten a few messages about it lately and I want to just clear that up very quickly. Then I'm going to get into uh, my study tips and how I studied for this particular section of the test to get a 129 on my MCAT test. And then finally, I'm going to wrap it up with my top five tips talking about things that you need to do before you write the test or when you're actually there on test day in order to get a great score on this section. Now, I'm so happy to see that the last few videos on all of the other subjects have been able to help a lot of people out so far. I'm going to go ahead and link those in a playlist um, right above here if you guys need help with the other sections. But other than that, if you like this video, feel free to smack that like button, subscribe to the channel if you want a new video every single week, and then let's get started. So just to start off with a quick intro, the biological and biochemical foundations of living systems is the third section that you're going to be writing on the MCAT. And it's broken down to be 65% biology questions, 25% biochemistry questions, 5% organic chemistry questions, and then 5% general chemistry. So now, the trap when it comes to this section of the test. Because the average pre-med, and I'm saying on average, will have come from either a biology undergrad, or a biochemistry, or a biomedical science, or a chemistry undergrad, something that's applicable to this section of the test, a lot of people feel like they don't need to actually put in as much time studying this material because they've already seen it already. Now the example that I got very recently actually was someone that had reached out to me asking about whether or not I thought it was a good idea for them to actually not study for this section at all because they had been recommended by a friend to instead just burn through a few thousand Anki cards and then you'd be totally ready for that section of the test. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah, but seriously, I love Anki cards just as much as the next guy, especially here in medical school where I probably love them more than the next guy. But I would highly advise against studying for this section of the MCAT test only in this way. There's two reasons for this. The first being because the MCAT test is not just a test about memorization, but instead what it's about is learning things and then applying them to answer their specific types of questions. And when I say that, I mean that the MCAT questions, in my experience, are just worded a little bit differently than the ones that I was used to seeing in other Read. The material might have still been the same, but the way that it was laid out and the different answer choices was definitely something that was just a little bit different. The second reason why you really should be studying for this section of the test is because the MCAT test is a scaled score test, and what that means is your mark is going to be given in relation to how other people have scored on the test before. And because biology, biochemistry, these are things that are very common um, among pre-med students, you're going to have to be beating out some of these other students that also have experience in this section of the test, so you're really going to want to be aiming to know as much as possible. Because of this, the study plan that I had created really had to be as bulletproof as possible, where the goal was to teach myself as much as I really could about this section. So the very first thing that you're going to do for studying for this section of the test, in my opinion, is to go on to the AAMC website. I'm going to go ahead and link it below. There's a document that shows you exactly what you need to know on the test. I need you to print this out or make some notes so that you can keep track of your own studying and make sure that as you go through, you're not missing any of the very important concepts. Steps, right? A lot of the resources, whether it be the Khan Academy videos or the study books, they are fantastic. But I just find um, that when I was studying, sometimes I'd miss something in one resource that was present in another resource. And I really just needed something to make sure that I was going to be hitting every single important point as I went through. Now, the next step is to start with your knowledge review. This is actually the book that I used when I was studying. Um, I got them used and then I used them myself and then my brother used them. So they definitely got some good use to them. They've, they've seen better days at this point. Regardless of whatever resource you're using, you're going to start, you're going to go through chapter by chapter and you're going to make your handwritten notes. Then you're going to go back over your handwritten notes and highlight the most important parts um, to make sure that you're really drawing special attention to those areas. Then you're going to go ahead and star the very difficult ones in case you want to go on YouTube or on the Khan Academy and watch a more detailed explanation. And then finally, you're going to go back onto your actual document that you have printed out or the notes that you made and double check that for that particular chapter, you you weren't missing any of the foundational concepts that they wanted you to know. Now after you've done making your notes and learning the concepts for every single chapter, you're then going to move on to your questions. Now you're going to answer the questions either in your practice book 
notes, or I'm gonna go ahead and link some free resources in the description below for some free questions. And then finally, one of the resources that are probably the most highly recommended amongst all the pre-med students that I know, albeit they are a little bit uh, more expensive, would be the UWorld practice passages, um, practice question banks. They are a little bit more expensive, but I've been told by many different students that they are fantastic uh, in terms of helping them get ready for the MCAT test. And really, it's this concept of active recall that's gonna prepare you for the MCAT test the best. It's learning something first and then using it, actually applying it to answer real questions. And for that reason, if you guys are following my three month plan for studying for the MCAT that I have uh, laid out, maybe I'll link it up here. What's really important is that even if you don't know all of the concepts uh, at the end of the chapter and you feel like you need to move on to the next chapter regardless, don't worry because you're going to be using this concept of active recall again when you actually start doing the full length practice tests. Just keep track of the things that you're confident about versus the things that you still need to learn a little bit better. So that way when you're going through and you're correcting all your tests, you could just keep this um, kind of like in track for yourself. And now finally, step three in my study plan for the biology and biochemistry section of the MCAT is that as you're going through and probably after you've actually answered the questions at the end of your chapter, but you're going to make note, make lists of the things that you need to memorize for this section of the test. A biology has a lot of them and what I used to do is that as I was going through the chapter, I would make my notes, but then even from my notes after, I'd have a separate book where I'd keep all my headings uh, and then I'd memorize all the different concepts, write things down, and I'd tackle the whole memorization process in a few different ways. But on that note, let's go straight to my five tips for how you could actually improve your score uh, on, the, on this section of the test. Tip number one is that you absolutely need to memorize all of the amino acids when it comes to this section of the test. And I mean, uh, know their side chains, know their properties, their charges, know how to draw them. One of the best ways that I would actually learn all of the amino acids would just be to uh, take them all, like their names, arginine, guanine, put them in like a little uh, box or in a hat or something, like I had them all written down. And I would just draw them one at a time, and then I would actually just draw the structure, and then I would check online to make sure that what I had drawn had matched the structure that was right in front of me online. There's actually a ton of things that you need to memorize for this section of the test and I'm going to go ahead and link a document in the description below. It's from the Princeton Review and it highlights basically everything that you should be memorizing before you actually go into this section of the test. Tip number two is to be very comfortable with enzyme kinetics. I'm talking Michaelis Menten uh, types of questions, line weaver bird plots, no VMAX, all the different types of inhibitors. The MCAT test absolutely loves asking these types of questions. I wrote the test twice myself. Uh, and both times they were just all over the place. So I would highly recommend that everyone be very comfortable with these types of questions. I'm gonna go ahead and link some passages from the Khan Academy in the description below that really helped me to prepare myself. Tip number three is to be ready because on the MCAT test, all of the things that you study aren't all gonna show up, especially with the 2020 version of the test. There's only gonna be 48 questions and there is a lot of material. So in both times that I wrote the MCAT test, I think the first time I wrote it, I had put so much studying uh, actually into the, the physiology parts and the anatomy and I had none of those questions show up at all. And then even the second time there was only a few, which totally threw me off guard because I had put so much studying into those sections. And I had assumed that because it's a test to actually get into medical school, you'd see something, uh, but I was disappointed that it didn't show up. So just be prepared that the things that you study aren't all going to show up, but that doesn't mean that you don't have to know everything because if you want one of these top scores, you really do need to know as much as possible. Tip number four, and this is actually going to be for writing this section of the test, is to make use of the star feature on your test. This one actually turned out to be a big help for me personally. What would happen was I'd go through and as I come across a question that I didn't know, I would give it my best shot in whatever time that I had allowed for myself to spend on that question, but then I'd star it. And what I saw on my practice test and even on the test itself is that sometimes when you're answering another question uh, later on in the test or you're reading another passage later on in the test, it'll trigger something in your mind uh, kind of like to, to help you remember the answer or something that you could use to help you solve a question that you had started earlier on. So give it that first shot, make sure you start it, but then at the end, or if you see something that could help, go back and actually answer the question the right way. And finally guys, tip number five is that if you are going to use the Anki cards to study for this section of the test, go ahead and just use one of the decks that have already been put out online. There are so many amazing decks when it comes to the MCAT and even things here in medical school. And I'm talking with a few of my friends, been a lot of them that have made hundreds of cards only to never actually use them because they spent so much time actually making the cards that they didn't have more time to go back and actually read them over. So in my opinion, I would highly recommend just using one of the great decks that are already out there, especially on Reddit.
All right, guys, and that's it. So those were my thoughts on the biology and biochemistry section of the test. And I've already given my thoughts on the other section of the test, so I hope that they've all been helpful to everyone so far. Uh, I'm gonna get into a few other videos in the future. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. But I hope everyone's studying has been going well so far. Keep remembering to work hard, study hard, have some fun, guys. And we'll see you all later. So everyone take care.